Hello everybody and welcome back to Everything Created. So I've noticed lately that I've gotten a lot of new subscribers. I keep getting them just at least one every few days. So very appreciative to those of you who have been here from the beginning, but f to those of you who are just more re recently subscribed, I just want to say hello. My name is Jordan. I keep a lot of different plants and a few exotic animals, and I just enjoy nature and try to do my best to replicate it indoors as much as I can. Um, so today, I just wanted to talk about some plants that are a little bit less common, uh, some that you don't see every day, that are extremely durable, extremely hard to kill, and they do great inside. These are the ones that I notice like no one talking about when it comes to people keeping plants inside. So for those of you who, you know, look up easy plants or hard plants to kill, and all you get is snake plants and pothos, I am here to bring you some variety, just some more interesting ones, something new something other than just those same two types of plants that you see everywhere whenever you type in this kind of thing. So I am going to put a timestamp in the description uh, for when I actually start doing the video. I have a little bit that I want to talk about before I start, so if you don't want to listen to me ramble, go ahead and skip over to that and I'll jump right in. If you actually want to stay and listen to me talk for a few minutes, I would just like to say I am sorry for not uploading as much lately. Um, it's been, I think, over six months maybe even a year since my last video, I don't know. But I've just been really busy with my job. Uh, in the winter time, I work at a dairy, and in the winter time, we get a lot more milk, and it's just so much busier at that time, um, and it's a lot harder to uh, keep up with everything in my personal life, which is perfectly fine, I'm okay with that, but because of that, I've lost a lot of plants over the winter time, just the ones that are a little bit more needy and the ones that require a lot of water and a lot of care, I've just let them die because I couldn't deal with it at the time. I don't want to try to hide that from anybody. It's not a secret and to me it's not a big deal. Uh, you just have to let a hobby you know r rotate around your life and the hobby is just something that has to form to your life and some of these plants that are harder to take care of just didn't fit in my life so I had to let them go. So, so these 10 plants that I'm going to show you today are just some that I was able to keep in my life. They fit around my work schedule and they are really easy to take care of and a lot of them are just super, super pretty and uh, they just couldn't be any better. So um, let's hop right in now. So here, I am going to start with one that will just really get your attention. This is a, a red banana, sometimes called a blood banana, or a Musa zebrina for the scientific name. And it's not one that you would think of for an indoor plant. A lot of people would think of it as an outdoor plant, but it is just, Look at that, that's just, it's beautiful. And I will be honest with you, I'm not sure if I even watered it. I've, I've maybe watered it once this entire winter and I had it in a sort of bright area, but not really that bright. Like it did fine uh, with just, just some medium light from a, actually a north window. So it did super well. It didn't lose, it may, I don't think it lost any leaves. It may have even lost one. Uh, all I did notice, however, is that it didn't grow. Uh, I think it may have put on one leaf over the entire winter, but other than that, it also didn't die. So now that I've put it outside, it's put on all of these leaves with the brighter red are all new. It's put on a bunch of new leaves, and you'll see some of the old ones like, um, like this one here. It used to have really bright red on it, but that red has kind of faded out now. As the leaves get older, they fade out, and then they die after they've completely faded out their color. Um, but these new ones have beautiful red colors and these will get quite a bit bigger as you can see it's already um, This tall in this pot and it may be that pot may be a little bit too big That may be why I was able to get away with not watering it so much But that's completely fine um, to I up pot a lot of my plants or or pot them in a pot That's too big because that actually helps me with watering if I can't get to them in time They still have some water left from the last time so this is probably my favorite one on this entire list. Uh, it's one that I actually put outside for the summer, so it will get a lot bigger, hopefully. And anyone can do that. You can, you can keep it inside in the winter and put it out in the summer, and you'll notice just how awesome and amazing this plant is. So I'm really hoping that it gets bigger. Uh, banana trees are never one that I thought that you could keep inside, but it did really well. Continuing on with possibly my, probably my second favorite on this entire list, I'm just going to go ahead and get the best ones out of the way first. No, it's not going to be in any particular order. I'm just saying <laughs> this one is my second favorite. And you may remember this from my plant haul video that I did quite a while back. This was tiny compared to how big it is now. Like it was, it was literally tiny. I think I had, 
just potted it up from a two inch pot up to this one, which is I think a four inch and it's rather deep. Now I just want to show you, you can't see right now just how long it is. I don't, I don't even know if I can reach far enough to actually show how long this thing is. I'm just going to lift it up like that. These are, it is insanely long and it's just this one. I watered it, I think a couple of times throughout the winter because I really, I really love it. And I noticed that if it does get a little, little uh, wrinkly on the leaves, I would water it then in the winter, but it did amazing. It was literally sitting on a north window and it actually flowered inside in a north window. And by sitting in the north window, I mean, it was sitting like this window, window being here, it was sitting this way and all these leaves were hanging down into the darker room. So the fact that it was able to flower in those conditions with me not watering it very often was incredible. It's been sitting out here. It's gotten some water from the rain, but I don't really water it that often. These leaves are really thick and succulent. They hold on to water. They don't like too much water. In addition to the fact that they also have these uh, bulbs on their roots that, that hold quite a bit of extra water too. But these do really well. I, I would say they would do well for anybody. I don't see how anyone could kill one of these. If you do, nothing to be ashamed of, but I'm just saying it's super, super easy for me. Uh, it fits in my lifestyle at least, and it's not one that a lot of people talk about. I'm sure it's probably gaining popularity. I haven't really been in the mix here lately <laughs> as to what plants are super popular right now, but this one should be top of the list. It is just an incredible plant, super easy to take care of. It's really pretty and it grows insanely fast. So I would, I would recommend this one to anybody, 10 out of 10 beautiful plant, easy to take care of, and it makes flowers all the time. How cool is that? And I forgot to mention the scientific name for the string of hearts is Serapegia woodii, if you wanted to know. If you don't want to know, then I'm sorry for even sharing. So next on the list is everything on this board. I'm going to go ahead and say all of these because I, I didn't water it at all in the winter, and it did really well. So as you can see, I have quite a few different air plants, and I actually am not sure on, on, on the species on all of these. Air plants are really hard for me to identify because there's just so many and they all look really similar to me. So these are all just your typical little air plants. I know this one is a Tillandsia ionantha. That's the only one that I know for sure. This one I don't know about, this one I don't know about, this one I don't know about. So if you happen to know, please let me know in the comments. And then this is a little piece of Christmas cactus. This is a piece of Ripsalis, but I don't know exactly what kind. And then this big one, I'm going to address the elephant in the room here. This big one is a type of bromeliad known as Bilbergia brasiliensis. It makes little pups pretty frequently and it also can make really beautiful flowers. And it actually does have a flower spike coming up in the middle, but you can't see it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't show up on camera. So unfortunately I can't show you that yet, but when it blooms, I will get pictures, if not videos, I will at least get pictures and I will show you, um, I will show you pictures of that flower. I'll put it either on, on my Instagram or I may make a video about it. We'll see. So that's, that's it for this. Um, these just like to have water in their center area. So I would just take it in the shower and spray the whole thing down and then just get some water in here while I was at it. And they've done fine all winter. It's actually, it's still growing and it's still alive. So I consider that a win. Next, I wanted to show you guys this one. And although I have, I have really tortured it throughout the winter. They, they do have to be watered. I had to pretty consistently water this one, but they can, it can hold on for you. So like they will droop all the way down. These leaves literally will just do, will do that. Like they'll lay flat against it and you can water it and they'll stand right back up. I always appreciate plants that do that. They, they're a little bit dramatic, but at the same time they're forgiving. So this is a, philod a red philodendron. I think it's Rojo Congo. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've had it for, I don't know. I think I've had it for over a year, maybe. I'm not sure, but <coughs> it's been growing really good. It's been putting out new leaves pretty consistently, and it's just really nice looking. Um, it's got red. These stems up here are red, and it puts out little aerial roots that will kind of just go down to the soil. I don't, I don't know why it does that. It's not really a climber, uh, but these actually do get pretty big over time, so um, it's one that you might want to make sure you have some room for. They don't get absolutely massive. I want to say it's like maybe two foot by two foot in size total, but they, I'm sure they can get bigger, but that's just what they get on average. I believe that's just by memory, not sure at all, but it's one that did really well. They don't need a lot of light. Pretty much all philodendrons don't need much light. And again, all of these plants that I'm showing you, they were all in a room with just North windows and they really, really thrived the entire time. So 
this one if it's not on the list it's definitely an honorable mention like i said it does droop but it is forgiving if when you water it it will stand right back up unless the leaves are actually crunchy then they'll still stand up so that is a huge yes in my book so i may or may not have done a video about this one i'm really not sure i think it may have been in a video i don't know but this is a uh, begonia maculata or angel wings begonia and it's uh my sister always says it looks like it has leprosy because it's just a green leaf with silver spots all over it uh, very very fast grower it was about i don't know a quarter of this size when i got it it's super easy to propagate you can cut off any like any of these leaves just a leaf by itself with a little bit of stem to it and it'll grow roots and sprout a new plant and you can also chop any of these stems virtually anywhere and they'll root and uh, make a new plant as well so super super pretty super easy to take care of uh, this one is a lot like the last one that i showed you it will droop but it's super forgiving just exactly the same as the last one it'll droop down when you water it it stands right back up it's not super picky about anything uh, it did really well all winter in a very dry room uh, with just very minimal light so it did a fantastic job it's a fantastic plant and not enough people talk about these they're not hard they're really not and no one no one talks about them as how easy they are that that's why I'm doing this video because I feel like people are leaving out a lot of really easy plants when they could be they could be making bank off of these so this one is a euphorbia trigona also known as an african milk tree uh, it's a type of succulent and kind of like a cactus but not really a cactus it's also called a madagascar cactus it's got it's got quite a few different names it is one of the only succulents that can actually do okay in like medium or low light it doesn't it doesn't like low light by any means it'll have a thinner growth if it's in lower light but it's still really pretty regardless um, i know for a fact that i watered this just like once throughout the winter and it did really well and again same as all the other plants just in north window lighting and it is doing really well um, it's really easy to take care of doesn't need water very often in fact you want to let it dry out really well before you water it it's got these main stems and then it has l little tiny leaves all over the tops and you can see these uh, two colored areas where it's like a little bit lighter that's where uh, the new growth is the lighter green is the new growth and it's just overall a super cool plant a little bit of a warning on it though it is mildly toxic um, if you break any of these little spines or break off any of the leaves leaves it bleeds a little bit of a white milky looking substance and that stuff is very irritating to your eyes and it's poisonous as well so it could put you in the hospital if you're not careful with it now I say all that just to say this I have three cuttings of it about this size if any of you happen to want to buy them or trade with me you can message me on Instagram Jordan has pets just send me a DM and I should reply pretty quickly and uh, we can work out something with that and like I said I have three of these so um, I would just just root these in water and then once you get them rooted and just stick them in the soil and they should do great for you so this is one that I really really like it's growing a little bit funky and a little bit thin because I've had it in too low of light um, so it's definitely not going to do as well in the northern windows as some of these others have but it's still although the growth will be thinner it's still going to grow for you it has grown a lot over the winter you can see um, any like these places up here that have the thicker growth thicker growth or shorter internodes these are like this is the internode that the section between these points which are called nodes where the leaves and roots can come out um, these internodes keep getting longer as you can see when they start to get longer about right here is when i moved it inside so this is all new growth just over the winter all these sections and you can see each internode is getting a little bit longer because it was in low light uh, they do really well with very very little water um, all they'll do is just wrinkle as you can see on the bottom of these leaves here it has wrinkled up a little bit because I haven't watered it in quite a long time so I'm gonna do that before I put it back up today but it's the peperomia hope it's actually a hybrid between a couple of different peperomias so I'm actually not sure what the scientific name would be but peperomia hope will bring it up in a Google search so it's a really nice plant really pretty super easy to take care of so this one is a little bit big I kind of I made a poor choice to film everything out here but that's all right it's not not bad so this is a ficus elastica and the uh, variant is I don't remember give me a second it'll come back burgundy ficus elastica and then this this variant is called burgundy 
It is uh, one of the more dark leaved ones and it does really well in sort of lower light. Now if you do have these in lower light, all of the growth will be really stretched out. So like you'll have a bit of stem, one leaf, bit of stem, one leaf, and they'll just grow really tall and leggy like that, which if you like that look, perfectly fine. But if you want them to grow a little bit more compact like this, try to give them more light. So the same as with the African milk tree, if you break these, uh, if you break the leaves, they will bleed. And this sap is also poisonous. So you want to be sure and not get it in your eyes once again. Um, this is a very forgiving one with water. I've noticed that, in fact, just a couple of days ago, this one was completely dried up and all the leaves were drooping down. And they, they droop down and then they kind of fold in half like little tacos. But it looks a lot better now. I watered it and now they're all flattened out the way they're supposed to look again. There's no brown edges, no, uh, no brown tips on any of the leaves. It does super well in pretty much whatever humidity, whatever temperature, and it just it just does its best in pretty much any light too. So super easy plant, very hard to kill. Now they do prefer higher light, so anytime you can give them more light, definitely do that. But if you can't, they should live for you. So this plant is very deformed, and that is a product of low light. I have not I have not kept it in very good lighting at all. So it was straight up when I got it, and then it kind of leaned over towards the window, and then it started leaning back up. So, you know, although it may be unsightly to some, I really like this look. I'm loving this look. So this is a mother of thousands plant. It's a type of succulent and it makes little babies on the ends of the leaves. As you can see right there, hopefully, I'm, I'm just hoping it focuses. I can't actually see my screen right now. So it makes little babies on the leaves and they will fall down into the soil and they'll start growing just like that one right there. Um, they're super easy to care for. Again, just like with any succulent, they want to dry out completely before you water them again. If you keep them wet at all, they will get root rot. So um, super easy to take care of. This was the same as the others, just in a north window, so it's not doing quite as well because it does like higher light. But they will live like this. Although it's not ideal, they will survive like this and they will just continue growing and they will still make these little, these little babies no matter how much light they're getting. So they will do a lot better in higher light, but you don't have to. If you keep them in lower light, they'll be okay. Again, I am regretting doing this outside because I'm probably getting a little bit sweaty and also I'm starting to lose light because I was on a port important phone call for quite a while. So anyways, this last one that I'm going to show you is the Monstera deliciosa. I know this is probably on a lot of your easy houseplant lists, but it's a little bit less common than the typical ones that you always hear about. So I'm sure it's maybe a little breath, a breath of fresh air to see it. Super easy to take care of. I've only watered it a couple of times throughout the winter and it's doing great. Same as all the others, it droops if it needs water, you just water it and it stands right back up. Now I do have it in kind of a big pot, probably for how big it actually is. It's not, it's not huge. I'm sure my camera is probably having a stroke trying to focus right now. But as you can see, they make really thick stems and at the base of each of these stems, I, I just hope you can see, uh, there'll be an aerial root. There's one right there. It's a, aerial root that goes down once it reaches the soil it becomes a uh, a dirt root if, so to speak and these plants are really easy they're a big vine actually so although it looks like a typical potted plant right now it will eventually grow up something i just don't know what i'm going to grow it up yet so they do get huge this is a plant that if you get it you want to have a lot of space unless you're planning to kill it so if you're not planning to kill it you want to have a really big area selected for it so it can uh, live its best life and get huge for you without dying. So that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, thank you to all of my subscribers, both new and old subscribers from the very beginning. I really appreciate having you guys here watching my channel, even if I don't post very often. So I came to a point where I decided that the YouTube thing is going to be a very, very, very passive hobby. Um, I'm just, I just don't have enough time. Life gets busier the older you get, and I don't have time anymore to consistently make videos. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to try to put out what I can when I can. And if you guys want to support me, then I appreciate that. That's really nice. Thank you guys for staying subscribed. And if you don't want to, that is perfectly fine as well. I can't blame you at all. I, I'm not sure if I would subscribe to a person that doesn't upload consistently, but if you do, I'm very thankful for that. So again, thank you all so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And if you don't want to subscribe, then don't. You don't have to. I'm not going to make you. So thank you all again and have a good day.